Do you know how aquatic creatures look like when they're just emerging from the water? Yeah, they look wet, but do you know how to draw that? Stay tuned because in this video I am going to show you exactly how to draw that in a few easy steps. Let's go! So before we start off with the fun part, which is the frog, I do want to talk a minute about specularity or material properties. Now in this drawing you see three spheres. One looks very smooth, the top one, because it has a very crisp white small highlight, which is actually called the specular. And the one on the left is looking more rough because it has a very large and a less bright specular. So it's actually the specular of a material that makes it look either smooth or rough. And the very right sphere is very reflective which makes it look even more smooth. Now water is a very smooth and reflective material. So if you put a layer of water on any surface it's going to look smooth and reflective. To demonstrate this even further I would like to show you this drawing I made a while ago which are actually wet pebbles and even though the surface of a pebble usually is rough and not very reflective at all you can see in this drawing the pebbles are very reflective very smooth you can see the highlights and that's what makes them look wet so if you want an object to look wet you're gonna make it smooth you're gonna make it reflective and you're going to give it highlights there's also these very thin white lines here and that's actually the highlight coming off water that's puddled up between these pebbles. And in this drawing we're going to use a white gel marker to add those little highlights to the water lines. And the downside of these gel markers is that the tip is often too big or too blunt to create these very thin lines. But I have a very neat trick for that so make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because then I'm going to show you how you create these very thin white lines with a blunt gel marker. So now we can start with the fun stuff, drawing the frog. I added a reference image of the frog in the top corner of the video. You can see it's just a frog chilling out in the water, sticking his head above it and his back, I guess, his hands and his feet are still underneath the water. We're not going to draw the water nor the ground because that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. We're just going to draw the frog. I already made the sketch. So if you want to download this reference image, I add the link to it down below in the description so you can look it up for yourself. Now we're going to start with a very light base layer because I want to explore where the highlights made by the water are going to be and I am leaving them out. And I really won't be touching any of these highlighted areas up until the very end of the drawing. Now I try to create this base layer with as little colors as possible. So I'm using only three. I'm using a black, I'm using a warm brown color which tends a little towards green and I'm using a bright mid-tone green. I'm using so little pressure for this base layer that it's almost hard to see it appear on camera. But if I make any mistakes in placing the highlights, I can still fix it as long as I'm drawing this lightly. And as soon as I'm going to use more pressure, it becomes harder to fix the errors. So I want to color in the entire frog very lightly with very little pressure. And then I can kind of judge if it's okay, if all the highlights are on the right position. And if I think they are, I can continue with more pressure. So when I'm happy with the first layer, I'm going to continue working on a second layer and I'm going to use a lot more pressure for this. Um, but not so much pressure that it's really getting this uh, smooth shiny effect. I don't want to damage the paper because I still want to add some more layers on top of this. But I do want the colors to become very uh, vibrant right now. So I do want to use a little more pressure than in the first layer. And be sure to keep looking at your reference photo. You want to approach the colors the reference photo has as close as possible in your drawing. And you can use more colors for this than in 
the first layer if you'd like to. I think I only used like uh, four or five colors. I added uh, a yellow and I added a gray brownish color. So I was still working with only five colors in this part of the drawing except for the eye of course but that's a different story i'm not going to talk about the eye in this video but i could do another video about how to draw eyes um what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at my reference photo very carefully and i'm going to try and copy the color and the shapes to my drawing so I'm not going to look at any details right now. I'm not looking at the wrinkles around the mouth or in the skin. I'm just looking at the main shapes like the black spots, the color of the skin, the color of the face. So I'm trying to copy all of these colors into the drawing. And the main thing that's important for this particular tutorial is to leave out the highlights that you just created in the first step. Because the darker and the more intense the colors of these frog are going to be, the more important it is that the highlights are still white. Up until now we left the highlights white and we didn't touch them at all but now the time has come to add some color to the highlights and you might think why are we adding color to the highlights because I thought the brighter the highlights were the more it looked like a wet object well I also said that water is very reflective so we do need to add some reflections into these highlights to make it look like the reflective surface that water actually is so I'm going to use different colors for this. I'm going to use a light blue and a, a slightly darker blue. And I'm going to use black again. And then I'm going to use a white pencil to blend it all together to give it a smooth effect. And we're going to look at the reference photo again. And there's actually two things that you can notice in the reference image. The first thing is that you can still see the black spots underneath the water. But instead of being black, they're slightly darker blue right now. So we're just going to continue the black spots that have been cut off because of the highlights and we're going to make them a little darker blue and you can also see on the reference photo that there are some very sharp curvy lines in the corners of the highlights and we're going to copy those onto the drawing too so um at this point we're really going to take the time to look at the highlights in particular uh, find the details in the highlights and copy them to the drawing So the highlights are in place and the frog is starting to look really wet right now, which is great. But to make this drawing more photorealistic, we want to add some more details to it. And when you look at the reference photo, you can see that there's these wrinkles around his mouth and on his chin. But there's also these sharp lines um, on his back and side where the kind of pimples are. I don't know, are it pimples when you're dealing with a frog? Anyway, you're going to copy all these little details to the frog. Now it's really important to keep your pencils very sharp. And we're going to add those fine lines. And now while I was adding those lines, I found that in some spots the lines were just too sharp and dark. So I grabbed a white and a pale yellow. And I used these very light pencils to blend in the details into the background of the frog skin a little. So it looks natural. <laughs> So I think we're finished with the colored pencils here and we're gonna use the white gel marker to add some highlights and water lines to the frog. And this is really the fun part because you have a drawing that's already looking very natural and you have a frog that's already looking very wet. But by adding those details with the white gel marker, you can really finish it off and it starts looking very natural. So this is really fun to do. And like I said in the first part of the video, a gel marker often is a little bit too blunt or the tip is a little bit too uh, big to 
add in those really sharp thin lines so we're going to add lines that are not thin enough we're going to add rather thick lines and we're also going to Put some dots onto the surface and after we edit all those details with the gel marker we're going to wait for 10 seconds for the ink to really dry and then we're going to get a pencil with a very 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 sharp tip and we're going to scratch part of the highlights that we just drawn with the white marker out and you're not going to use a lot of pressure for this because you don't really want to draw on the paper you just want to use the pencil to scratch away part of the white gel marker so the thick lines are becoming very sharp and thin lines <laughs> So we have a finished drawing and if we look at the reference photo it resembles the reference photo pretty well. But in the reference photo the left foot of the frog is kind of hidden behind some pebbles and you don't see it at all. And it just looks so weird in this drawing because now we have a frog who's missing a foot. And I felt sad for him. So as a bonus step in this video I'm quickly going to add the foot so this little frog can be a happy frog enjoying all of his feet instead of missing one. So this is the final result. I think it looks pretty wet, so I think mission accomplished. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.